Welcome again to Basic Science class. And very quickly before we go ahead to our topic today, we want to look at how far courses road as that's not the topic, but have you ever thought about how far courses road accidents end? Do you even know the meaning of fog to start with? Maybe you've been seeing the world everywhere. Okay, maybe some morning you just woke up from bed and you saw something like white sky, you know, like the sky is coming very close to you and you could barely see far. That is what we call fog. So fog is a little um, droplet, droplet of water that comes together to form a thick cloud close to land or sea and it can also reduce the effect of seeing so when you are when there's fog you cannot in a, in a fog atmosphere you cannot see far so then how can this cause road accident that leads us to our topic today which is road accidents and their impact if you are just joining this class you might not understand actually we came all the way from accident in our previous class and so you might need to see that very quickly so that you can be able to um, flow along with us in this class. So check for accident, see that video first, and then come back to this class so that you can get full understanding of what we are talking about. So at the end of today's class, you should be able to define road accidents, list the common causes of road accident, and also outline the basic traffic rules you know we looked at basic safety rules in the other class on the accident but now we're going to look at basic traffic rules in today's class so what is road accidents road accidents road accidents occur when vehicles collide with other with each other or with pedestrians animals or objects on the road so road accidents can occur when a vehicle Oh, we're talking about a vehicle it can be a lorry it can be a car it can be a trailer and then you know a vehicle collide with each other so it can be with each other or with other pedestrians that is users human users using the road they are trekking they are not in a vehicle those are called pedestrians animals so accident also can happen with animals or objects other objects on the road it can be a building it can even be a pole you understand it can be a tree so these accidents can result to injuries and injuries i mean to say damage to vehicle and even loss of life so accident victims are conveyed to the nearest hospital using an ambulance and i have to tell you reason why we use ambulance it's not because they just want to make noise or because it's the boss you know most time these cases are emergency cases and if you just use a normal um, vehicle to convey them, you might not be able to get to the hospital on time because of um, traffic and other road conditions that may not be favorable. But if you use an ambulance and the siren is put on, people know that there is an emergency case of it, of, of that, that, can, that is between life and death. And so they give way to ambulance to pass and that will help them to get to the hospital on time in order to save the person involved, the victim of such accident. So the next is causes of road accident. Causes of road accident. Speeding, number one, speeding. Driving above the speed limit reduces the driver's ability to react to unexpected situations leading to accident. If a driver is in, let me use that word, is in competition, you know, if you're trying to just surpass every other vehicle that is on the road because maybe your car is new and you're just trying to, you're speeding too much because you have an emergency case, not because you, you're going somewhere and you're almost late. Even at that, even when you have that, you should still speed at more, you should still have, your speed should just, should still be at moderate uh, at moderate range so but driving above the speed limits reduces the drivers when you are driving above the speed limits and you are just rushing when there are unexpected situations you you do not have the ability you won't have the ability to control it to react appropriately to it and that can lead to accidents a very ghastly one at that number two is reckless driving reckless driving reckless driving ignoring traffic rules Changing lanes abruptly and tailgating can result in collisions. You know, when you ignore traffic rules, the, the red light is on. You know, we're going to look at traffic lights 
in the course of this in this same video and the, you know normally traffic when you see the red light being put on the, on the traffic light it means well, you should stop but if you ignore the traffic rules are you because you're rushing somewhere you don't decide to just keep moving you might have an end of collision with another vehicle coming that same way so when you ignore traffic rules it can lead to can result in collision and road accident changing lanes abruptly you are not you're not just being careful in changing of lane you're just driving anyhow adversely it can lead to accident then tailgating tailgating is um you know when you're trying to follow another vehicle bumper to bumper and you're just rushing tailgating can lead to because you will not be careful your attention is on that vehicle so you're not even mindful of your environment of the um other vehicles that are or other road users that are also on the road and so because you're you're targeting not to miss that vehicle it can result in collisions or accident then distracted driving so distracted driving too can lead to this you can see this video you know it's it's kind of funny see the guy is she's one hand was on the steering and with her phone with the other hand see the man beside her looking at her with that kind of eye was what are you doing you're driving look on but you know it didn't even see anything can you just look on so using phone is can lead to distracted driving eating as you're driving or other distractions divert attention from the road because when you are using one phone, you are using phone with the other hand and one hand is on the steering wheel you 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 are having a divided attention one you're trying to respond to your phone you're trying to control this and um, the the steering the car with the, using the steering and you're trying to check other of so you are you will have divided attention and so it can lead to to accident eating to while driving same thing with eating you're trying to get the food to your mouth and you one hand on the steering if care is not taken you might lose control or get distracted and that can lead to accident then other distracting activities like trying to correct somebody at the back and you're turning back trying to look at the person or try, you're just in you're just carried away by the gist and you're looking at the person and you're not concentrating on the road this or this can also lead to accidents the next is poor road conditions poor road conditions like potholes you can see that in the video you can see potholes slippery roads road are too slippery and inadequate sign signage contribute to accidents like potholes for example now and drivers that are careless may not even know that there are potholes there and because they are speeding if they enter the pothole with that speed that it can lead towards accidents it can lead to accident and even there are ditches too that can be on the road that if you're not careful and you're not and maybe you're not you're not used to that particular route you're going through it for the first time and you're just on high speed you might enter a ditch without you knowing because you don't even know that there's a ditch there so poor road condition is also a major cause of road accident the next is bad weather you know we talked about how fog can lead to can lead to road accidents so bad weather like rain fog or snow reduce visibility and road traction making driver driving riskier you know in nigeria we don't experience snow maybe if you're tall it will be once i, I think since I, I can remember it was only once i think that i've seen snow in nigeria yes so but other countries they experience that so snow it can help them to lose road traction and can make the driving riskier so they can have accident but for fog now back to fog you know i defined fog earlier as you know a little droplet of water coming together to form a thick cloud close to land or sea and also prevent visibility so when there is fog fog you cannot see afar most of that's why you see some drivers they put on their headlights and put on their um, brake lights too at the back do you know why they do that so that other vehicles that are coming will know that oh there's a vehicle coming because they, are, they can see the lights put in front and at the back so to help them because you cannot see far but if you are driving uh, recklessly in this kind of um, weather you can also lead to accidents so rain when there's too, rain to when rain is falling you know some bad road poor road can be slippery maybe road that is filled with mud if you speed on such road it can lead towards accident even on tired roads you don't speed too much when there is rain you walk gently because the water if there's water lodged in that environment it can carry the, the if you if you're if you're running too fast or you're rushing too fast it can um, affect the steering wheel and you might lose 
control of the standard way, which can also lead to accidents. So road accidents have a significant impact on individuals, families, and society as a whole, causing physical and emotional pain, loss of income, and increased medical expenses. The impact of road accidents includes physical injuries like broken bones, cuts, and bruises. More severe accidents can result in head injuries, spinal cord damage, and even death. And you know, in the end, families of victims suffer emotional trauma. Maybe in the case of loss of life, you know, they are going to suffer a lot of emotional trauma. And society bears economic costs due to medical expenses and property damage imagine a vehicle that collided with a house you know the building will some part of the building will be destroyed and that's an extra expense on its own apart from the medical expenses so it has put a, an economic cost on the world society so now we're going to look at basic traffic rules basic traffic rules we have the traffic lights we have the pedestrian crossings crossings and then zebra crossings so the, the first one is traffic lights traffic lights are signal okay maybe you'll be thinking maybe you are perhaps in an environment that you might not not in the city and you're thinking what is this thing blinking in the sun that is what we call traffic lights and maybe in some movies too, you might have seen something like this red yellow and light this is what we call traffic light and they help us to control traffic and traffic the flow of traffic in congested environments so traffic lights are signals placed at intersections to control the flow of traffic they use red yellow and green lights to indicate when vehicles should stop slow down or proceed so these are the colors they use red yellow and green color so red whenever you see red maybe you are at an intersection with traffic light and you, you are seeing red color it means stop Red means stop, don't go, just stop there. The, you cannot, the intersection is not clear at that time, stop. Then yellow means slow down, slow down, slow down. And green means go. Whenever the traffic lights turns on green light, it means that you should go. So following traffic lights helps prevent collisions at intersection. You know, that place can be so congested. You are trying to, maybe for example, you have a four uh, inter intersection, intersection, you are at an intersection that leads to maybe four places, different places, and this is trying to get across to that other side. This is trying to cross to that other lane, and there is intersection, and there is conjection in the traffic. But with this traffic light, it can help to control the flow of traffic without anyone getting injured or without accidents so the next is pedestrian cross crossing pedestrian crossing i always said that pedestrians are users human users of the road that means people that trek they trek on the road they walk on the road they are not in the vehicle they're not on tricycle they're not that those are called called pedestrian pedestrian crossing are designated areas for people to cross the road safely these are Places that have been designed for people to cross the road safely. And they use they usually have zebra markings and may also be accompanied by traffic lights. In that traffic light, you see something like human there. Human. And so when you see red, it means you shouldn't cross. And once you see green, that means the road is safe for you. You can cross. You can cross. Vehicles are required to stop and give way to pedestrians at this crossing. So that, that example of what you're seeing in the on the screen there is a pedestrian crossing you can see a, a traffic light ahead and you can also see something like white and black paintings on the road that is what we call zebra crossing and so that is a pedestrian crossing it helps to minimize and um, road accident with pedestrians maybe vehicles and also pedestrians it also helps to it's just to reduce the um, accident the next is zebra crossing zebra crossing zebra crossings are marked with black and white stripes on the road white and black stripes on the road they indicate a designated crossing area for pedestrians vehicle must yield to pedestrians waiting to cross or already crossing at a zebra crossing the difference between this and um, the pedestrian crossing that we looked at and um, is that this zebra crossing might not contain you might not see a traffic light with it so it just means that it's to help control the um the traffic vehicles that are 
to yield to pedestrians waiting to cross or already crossing at this crossing the road so whenever they see this black and white line drivers should be careful should be mindful knowing that you should check both ways are there pedestrians about to cross or are there pedestrians already on the lane so if they are you should slow down or stop and allow them to cross safely to the other side so let's look at importance of using seat beds and child restraining vehicles importance of you might have seen something like a rope in a vehicle and you see some somebody strap it across them and so what is the important you feel like ah, this is a bondage how will i put on seats there and perhaps oftentimes your parent might have told you put on your seat bed and you just want to do this kind of bondage i cannot move freely so what are the importance of using seat bed and child restraint in vehicles using seat beds and child restraint that is car seats is, is crucial for safety while traveling in vehicles number one seat bed seat beds are designed to hold passengers securely in seats during a collision you know we will talk about accident as an unexpected um maybe a incident that just happened you are not expecting it and not an unexpected situation so in the case of there's a crash or a collision if you're on your seat bed there's every possibility that the impact of that collision will be minimal on you but if you are not on seat bed there's every possibility that you will have more bruises and wound we have seen we've heard of cases in which people didn't use seat beds and when there was a collision they hit their head on the weak screen or on the dashboard and they they got injured some even died in the process but if you are with your on your seat bed it can help to prevent you hitting your head or your chest on the steering or on the dashboard or on the screen they prevent occupants from being thrown forward and potentially hitting the windshield or other parts of the vehicle during sudden stops or accident if sometimes it's not accident but maybe you're driving on a high speed and suddenly a child just dashed through the road you stop immediately if you are not on your seat bed that sudden stop can can make you can have an impact on you you just hit your head straight on the steering wheel or on the windshield or on the dashboard but if you're on your seat bed it keeps you so you don't hit your, you, you, you will not be thrown forward and you, you will not hit your head on either the windshield or the dashboard or the steering wheel. Why for child restraint? You can see that picture, you can see something on, on that baby, that is child restraint. So that the baby can, as they are driving, the baby is safe to there. The baby, when there's a sudden stop or accident, the baby will not collide with anything in the vehicle. So child restraints such as car seats are specially designed to keep young passengers safe like babies and young adults and young children. They provide necessary support and protection for a child's small body during a collision, reducing the risk of serious injuries. So safe pedestrian behavior, safe pedestrian behavior, looking both ways, crossing at designated places. This is what I'm going to look at here. So safe pedestrian behavior is important to avoid accidents while walking near the road. You know, not everyone will be in a vehicle, actually. Not everyone will be on a tricycle. Not everyone will be in a bus. Not everyone will be on the train. Not everyone will also be in on a bicycle. So what you that you are trekking or pedestrians that use the road also, they are also road users. How should you, what should your behavior be? What should you do to avoid accidents while walking near roads? Number one is looking both ways. Before you cross the road, you look left, you, you look right, and you look left again before you before you cross the road. So look both ways. Don't just assume that this is a dual road, you understand? And maybe vehicles here just move one way. No, because the, uh, there are instances in which another vehicle is coming in the opposite direction. But because you didn't look both ways, you have an idle collision with them. So before crossing a, ro a road, pedestrians should always look both ways to ensure new vehicles are coming from either direction. This helps them make informed decisions about when it's safe to cross. And that's why, you know, in the previous class, in the previous video, I mean to say, we talked about not being distracted. So if you are distracted, you might not be so keen to look both ways or be so and conversant with what is happening in your environment so looking both ways too you need your attention you have to pay attention to what is happening you look both ways is there a vehicle coming look the other direction is there a vehicle coming and then you cannot make informed decision after looking both ways 
number two is crossing at designated places like the pedestrian and the zebra crossing as we earlier talked about pedestrians should use designated cross crossing areas like pedestrian crossings or zebra crossings to cross the road crossing randomly or in unexpected places can increase the risk of accident like highways if that place is not pedestrian um there's no pedestrian crossing there there's no zebra crossing there please you should look for where you can cross safely using the pedestrian except they are not available and if they're not available that's why we talked about looking both ways before you cross even with the pedestrian crossing and zebra crossings you should still look both ways before you cross so let's look at role of traffic police officers in ensuring road safety you might have seen some persons and some police officers or some persons in uniform and they are controlling traffic and you have been wondering what are these people doing here so we want to look at their role in ensuring road safety traffic police officers play a vital role in maintaining road safety by one enforcing enforcing traffic laws you know there are in in every environment in every community there's there must be someone who will break the law that is it so what this police officer does is they help to ensure enforce traffic laws traffic police officers enforce traffic rules and regulations to ensure that drivers and pedestrians follow safe practices on the on the road then directing traffic directing traffic at busy intersections or during events traffic police officers direct the flow of traffic to prevent congestion and accidents so at busy intersections maybe where there are no traffic lights or even where there are traffic lights and people are often mean and uh, disobedient to, to traffic rules and also places in which maybe traffic lights is no longer working you can have them there to direct the traffic or when there is an event and the place is busy you, you can have the traffic of a um, police officer there to direct the flow of traffic to prevent congestion and also to prevent accidents this is responding to accident they have to respond to accidents when accidents occur traffic police officers are usually among the first to arrive at the scene because most time when there are, there's an accident there's probability that the place will be congested you know congested and um, because other vehicles come so they have to clear the road and also to secure the place and assist so they provide assistance secure the area and ensure that injured individuals receive help promptly so that is they respond to accidents too by making the place safe for everyone secure the area and also provide assistance for victims of such accidents and ensure that injured in individuals receive help promptly then educating the public another role the place to educate the public traffic police officers educate the public about road safety through awareness campaigns school visits and community programs promoting safe driving and pedestrian behavior so today we have looked at road road accident and their impact and you already know that road accidents are uh, anything we are talking about in road accident that's to do with what the road the users of the road like vehicles the pedestrians buses and even tricycle, bicycle, in as much as you are using the road, it has to do with them. And we have looked at different types of uh, causes of road accident, what can lead to road accident. We we'll also look at the basic traffic rules. Basic traffic traffic rules, we we'll look at traffic lights, and you know by now that red means what? Stop. Yellow means slow down. And green means that you should go. And we we'll look at the rules of police traffic police officer in ensuring an environment or making sure that there is to prevent accidents so very quickly we're going to look at our question using the exam guide app as i said earlier on in the previous video that if you haven't gotten this app you need to get it i'm still saying it here again if you haven't gotten the app you need to get the app for adequate learning for adequate learning so i want to check out for some question very quickly 
Okay, so I'm going to be taking this question after which I'll leave you to do others by yourself. It says, which of the following is the means of conveying an accident victim? You know, I, I explained this very well. I thought about, you know, using a, a vehicle and I explained why you shouldn't. So let's look at A, ambulance, B, helicopter, C, cano, D, tricycle, and E, train. So which is most suitable for conveying an accident victim? So, ambulance, is it ambulance, be helicopter, is helicopter more convenient, is keno, is tricycle or train, the right answer there is ambulance. And I, I, I said earlier on that we use ambulance because um, people already know that there's an emergency and so the, the, with the siren being on, people know that there's an emergency and they give road, they give way to the ambulance to move faster and to the nearest hospital in order to save the patient's life. See you in the next class.